Roll up, roll up! This is the fight we've been waiting for, people. This is a battle that transcends time and space. Uh, I'm Jacob. I'm Dave, and this is Intel's Coffee Lake versus AMD's Ryzen. Fight! Since AMD launched their Ryzen processors back in March, delivering their first new CPU architecture in an age, and more processor cores than you can throw hot silicon at. That's not a phrase, Dave. We've been waiting to see how Intel would respond. Their response has been to accelerate the launch of every one of their processor releases to the point where we've got Intel's first mainstream hex core CPU three months earlier than it should have landed. Which is bringing its own problems. Intel only released their high-end desktop chips, their Skylake X and Cable X chips, back in August. And already three of those have been rendered essentially obsolete. That's the Core i7-7800X, the 7740X and the 7640X. All entirely pointless. Well, they would have done if it was possible to buy any of Intel's Coffee Lake CPUs. They're mighty hard to come by at the moment. Which brings us to the first battle between Coffee Lake and Ryzen, pricing and availability. When it comes to the suggested pricing for both Ryzen and Coffee Lake, it's looking like a draw. That's to be expected given that they're both taking aim almost directly at one another. The top-end Ryzen, the 1800X, is something of an outlier, however, at over $400. With the co top Coffee Lake CPU is around $360. But because there are so many Ryzen CPUs in AMD's range, there's an actually a 1700X, which is still an 8-core, 16-thread processor, that costs less than the 8700K, and it can still beat the Intel chip in any multi-threaded test you care to throw at it. And it can still be overclocked. It's a lot tighter down at the Core i5 versus Ryzen 5 level, however, where the 8600K and the 1600X are priced almost identically at around $250. But then there's the non-overclockable Core i5-8400, which has a $190 price tag, and the overall gaming performance it to make AMD blush. Where AMD's Ryzen, however, takes the win here is in the fact you can actually buy them. As of right now, Intel's Coffee Lake is still MIA. And the few you might find dotted around random e-tailers are priced such a ridiculous level you wouldn't want them anyway. Yeah, because the launch was brought forward by such a great extent, there just wasn't the stock available in the channel to buy at launch, and there still isn't. Most retailers are expecting stock to arrive sometime in mid-November, with free-flowing CPUs starting to arrive in December. The actual platforms the processors slip into is almost as important as the CPUs themselves. There's no point having a great value processor that can only be used with a supremely high-priced motherboard, right? For Intel, the choice is simple. Any Coffee Lake customer can choose any chipset they want, as long as it's Z370. There is only a single high-end chipset available for the 8th gen CPUs, with the cheaper, less feature-rich H370 and B360 boards only expected to arrive early in next year. That's not an issue if you're only looking at the K-series processors with their hefty overclocking chops, but not if you've got your heart set on the i5-8400. That's a chip which doesn't need the fancy extras of the Z370. There are well-priced Z370 boards, however, and you compare those with the non-overclockable chips, but the H or B series motherboards will be a bit better fit and be cheaper. There's no such trouble on the Ryzen side with X370, B350 and A320 motherboards all available with different features, different prices and a single socket. Yeah, the X370 and the B350 boards feature impressive overclocking performance, while the A320s just deliver standard CPU clock speeds. And that single AM4 socket is also designed to support the, both the next generation Ryzen and Vega APUs and the refreshed 12 nanometer Ryzen CPUs expected in the next year. Yeah, so will Intel's LGA 1151 socket still be around for the next generation of their chips? We doubt it. So AMD pulled the trigger on their Ryzen CPUs, once more betting that higher core counts were the future. They tried that before with the failed bulldozer CPUs, but this time around the world seems to be listening. The bulldozer chips were pretty rubbish, however, regardless of core count. Come at me, FX owners. Yeah. So you think that in straight CPU terms, this would be a whitewash for AMD. But hold on. The extra two cores of the Ryzen 7 chips over the Intel Core i7s don't necessarily often deliver that much extra performance. And the Coffee Lake CPUs have a way around it when they do. When you look at Cinebench rendering tests, the Ryzen 7 smashes the Core i7. And the same goes for Ryzen 5 and the Core i5 processors. In X264 video encoding, however, tests show them to be a lot closer. And then there's the classic Intel single-threaded performance, which is far in advance of the AMD competition. In short, that was a draw. And this is where things get a mite stickier for AMD's Ryzen in terms of CPU performance. Coffee Lake is one hell of an overclocking chip. The arguments are this is why Intel needed a whole new socket and chipset for Coffee Lake to deliver the level of power that the two extra cores needed in order to be overclocked to the point where they could take on the higher core count Ryzen's. Because once you get either of the Core i7 or Core i5 Coffee Lake chips above 5GHz, the difference between the multi-threaded performance of the two chips is very limited. 
and the single threaded performance goes through the roof. The flip side of all this is that the Ryzen chips can be overclocked while Intel charge a pretty penny for the privilege. Unfortunately, they can't actually be overclocked all that much. This is what we all came here for, right? Well, the two different platforms are able to offer us gamers in terms of those all important frame rate figures. Overall, this is a straight win for Intel. The Coffee Lake chip's superior single core throughput allows them to deliver across the board higher frame rates. There are games such as Doom when running in Vulcan mode and Rise of the Tomb Raider in DirectX 12 trim where there is some parity between them. But for the most part, it's all in Coffee Lake's favour, especially when you add in the modest frame rate increases that overclocking will net you. Granted, your graphics card is going to be doing most of the grunt work at higher resolutions, but you want a chip that's going to be able to give it the best opportunity to shine, right? There's also the fact that with Coffee Lake, Intel is finally upping their core count game, arguably at the behest of AMD. But that means that future titles which take advantage of such things are going to benefit Intel's Coffee Lake as much as AMD's Ryzen. So there we have it, a rather unsatisfying draw. But that means we've got a pair of platforms in Intel's Coffee Lake and AMD's Ryzen that offer a huge amount to us PC people right now, and that can only be a good thing. Yeah, so if your PC use is more heavily weighted to the productivity side, where high thread count is king, then you're probably better off picking an AMD Ryzen machine. But if you're a dyed-in-the-wool gamer, then it's probably Intel for you. We can't leave it like that, however. No one wants to see a draw, so we're going to take it to the independent adjudicator. Yes, and as I run the hardware shizzle around here, that falls to me. So no matter how much I adore and endorse the Core i5-8400 as a great gaming CPU, the fact that you can't buy any of the damn things right now means it's got to be a win for AMD's Ryzen. Thanks for watching, and if you like what you've seen, or even if you vehemently disagree, then let us know in the comments. And give us the old like and subscribe as usual, and check back for more lovely gaming and hardware goodness both here and on the website. Be nice to each other. Very important, that. Bye!